Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be turning this Lenovo Idea Center 5 into a gaming PC. It's not going to be a super high-end gaming PC, but it's definitely going to get the job done. Now, some of my regular viewers might remember this PC from a previous video. I did a review on it in its stock form, and overall, for the price I paid on eBay, it was relatively inexpensive. It's not a bad little setup. It is powered by the Ryzen 4300G, so we only have four cores and eight threads, but to tell you the truth, this is a very capable little APU, and with a dedicated GPU, I think this thing can put out some pretty decent gaming performance. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video, and it's actually taken me a little while to get around to this, because one of my neighbors needed a PC, and I let them use this. It was about a week after I did my initial video. Since then, they've bought a new laptop, I got this back, and now I think it's time to do something with it. So there's really not a lot of room in this PC, and the included power supply is one of those proprietary Lenovo power supplies, but it does put out 260 watts. Unfortunately, we don't have any extra power connectors on this, so my choices are kind of limited. But when it comes down to it, this did come with dual-channel DDR4 RAM running at 3200 MHz. We only have 8 gigs here. I thought about upgrading it for this video, but I'm just going to leave it like it is and see what happens. Now the GPU I chose to use is a GTX 1650. It's a non-super variant. This is one that I've had since it was released. This is a Zotac variant. It's a dual slot design. We don't need any extra power. And it really does put out some pretty decent 1080p performance. In my opinion, these are perfect cards to upgrade these pre-built PCs with. Another great option for a system like this would be a GTX 1050. And I completely understand that the GPU market right now is still really crazy, but like I mentioned, this is one that I purchased when it was released, so I did get it at retail cost. And as you can see, it fits perfectly in this little PC. Let me go ahead and throw that hard drive bracket in. And by the way, this Lenovo Idea Center 5 did come with a 256GB M.2 SSD and a 1TB mechanical drive. So now that we have the GPU installed, here's a quick rundown on the specs. For that CPU, we have the Ryzen 3 4300G, 4 cores, 8 threads, base clock of 3.8GHz with a max clock up to 4.0. You saw me throw that GTX 1650 in here. We also have 8GB of DDR4 running at 3200MHz and it is in dual channel. And this unit here has been upgraded from Windows 10 Home to Windows 10 Pro. So I've spent a little time with this in my office. I've installed a bunch of stuff that we're going to test here. And in this video, we're going to go over some PC gaming, some benchmarks, and some emulation. If you do end up doing something like this, I would highly recommend upgrading the RAM. We only have 8 gigs here, and I think that's going to be our main limiting factor in some of these games we're going to test. But we need to get into it and see how this thing really does. First up, let's go with uh, Forza Horizon 4. Initially, when starting this specific game up, it did give me a warning stating that uh, my system doesn't have enough RAM to run this properly. But you do have the option to continue, so I went ahead and did that. And right now, we're at 1080p, high settings. We're getting an average of 78 FPS at a Forza Horizon 4. And in my opinion, I mean, this is more than playable. It looks great with those high settings, 1080p. And this is about it. I mean, if I tried to go up to Ultra, I think we would dip below 60. But high settings on this little machine is still pretty good in my opinion. Next thing I wanted to do was run a couple benchmarks, so I just went with 3D Mark. And for Night Raid, we got a 26,553. With Fire Strike, we came in with a 7,960. And Time Spy, 3,491. Not bad at all. I mean, these scores look pretty decent for what we're working with here. Next game I tested was Dirt 5, where at medium settings, 1080p, no dynamic resolution scaling, and we got an average of 65 FPS out of this one. I knew going up to high would kind of be pushing it with the CPU and GPU combo, but medium settings still looks pretty decent, and it runs at full speed. I also tested Injustice 2, where at 1080p high settings, and we're getting a constant 60. To tell you the truth, I probably could have taken some of those settings up to Ultra, but I just left it at high and it still looks great. GTA 5, 1080p high. 82 FPS. I know this is an older one. I still personally really love it. And these GTX 1650s paired with these Ryzen APUs actually do pretty good with this game. Of 
Call of Duty Warzone did way better than I thought it would. We have a mix of high and normal, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you that most of it is at normal because we only have 4 gigabytes of VRAM and it does give us a warning in the settings. But by the end of this run here, I had an average of 71 FPS. Here's Doom Eternal, 1080p, high settings. I also tested this at Ultra and it did struggle a bit. We are around 54 FPS in a firefight like this. But with those high settings at 1080p, you can get an average of around 63 FPS. Now it's time to move over to some emulation, and first up we have PS2 using PC SX2, 1440p, we're using the OpenGL backend because we have an NVIDIA card here, and Gran Turismo 4 is running really well at 1440p. I think some of these games could go up to 4K with this GTX 1650. Moving over to Wii U with the SimU emulator, Breath of the Wild actually runs really well at 30 FPS. You can actually go to 1080, 30, but what I did here was go to 720 and just see if I could get 60 out of it. Unfortunately, it does dip below 60, as you can see, Afterburner up in the top left hand corner. It's definitely trying its hardest, but uh, I think your best bet would be 1080p, 30 with this game. And finally, we have PS3 using RPCS3. Now I've tested this emulator here with the GTX 1650 and several different CPUs and APUs in the past. The GTX 1650 does have enough power to take this up to 1080p, but really what's holding us back here is that 4300G and the fact that we only have eight gigs of RAM. If I would have added a little more RAM to this, I think we would have been okay at 60 with this game here. Since we added that GPU to a pre-built system with a proprietary power supply, I always like to keep an eye on power consumption from the wall. This is total system power draw from the wall using a kilowatt meter. At idle, 31 watts. Average 1080p gaming, 142. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall in my extreme test was 178 watts. So that power supply is plenty for this 4300G and the GTX 1650. So overall, I've been a big fan of the Ryzen 4000 series APUs and the 5000 series APUs. I chose to use this PC here because I already had it in my possession. And in the coming months, you will see a lot of these 4000 series APU pre-belts up on eBay used. There's still a lot of new ones, but people are going to want to upgrade to that 5000 series, or if GPU prices come down, they'll just want to build something totally different. And if you know what you're getting into, a build like this with a 4300G will do a pretty good job at 1080p. I would personally recommend getting something like the 4600G, but if you're on a tight budget, the 4300G can get you by for a little while. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this little rig here, just let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in picking something like this up, I will leave a few links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.